if you want to know why you they feel the way they feel inside your mind, inside your brain, and generally why things stay the way we they around you. Mind Clinic now the radio program will go teach you how to deal with all different types of stress and other things we person they go through on top mind clinic. You feel talk about mind matter will concern you directly. All the one will not even concern you directly. Good morning, the last day in the month of September 2020. By tomorrow, we're in a new month and we will be celebrating Nigeria at 60. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. My name is Victor Peppo. As usual, the ever amazing, very gracious, very beautiful <laughs> clinical psychologist at Neem Foundation, Chinyeru Godensi, our guest on the show. Good morning. Hello, Victor. Good morning. We're very glad you're able to join in. On the program today, we're still looking at finance. Oh my goodness. Uh, we're still looking at, uh, finding balance in the workplace. Our guest on the show is a psychologist specializing in business and organizational psychology. She is a C-suite executive and internal consultant in business psychology, human resource development and employee joy and engagement at Fireworks Creative Solution. She runs a consultancy outfit called Canon Mark Consulting. It focuses on thought leadership, trainings and consultations on organizational psychology communications audit employee joy and engagement that's new she is an ardent supporter for youth development she runs a foundation called she nation i like that she's a united states mandela washington fellow i should be a fellow soon our guest on the show is evangeline ulua bukola dan yusuf we're very glad you were able to come on the show Thank you so much for having me. I'm so glad. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> well, she will be on the show with us today discussing uh, finding balance in the workplace. It's over to you. Yeah. So I think, you know, balance is one of those things that are very important in the workplace, especially given that this month, all the conversations about um, mental health in the workplace. So to wrap it up, um, this is the conversation we'll be having, trying to find balance. Um, we're going to just go back a bit and do a little bit of a recap on talk, talking about stress um, and the signs of stress for those that are that don't know. Um, can you please give us a definition of stress and some of the signs um, about of workplace stress? Okay. Um, so I'll try not to give like a textbook definition so okay. that people <laughs> who are listening can actually understand like when it's happening to them. Mm -hmm. So um, stress generally um, happens internally first. And you become aware when you see like the physical and outward symptoms. So some of the outward symptoms are like lack of concentration, mm -hmm. um, irritability, distraction. Mm -hmm. Um, we also have like core physical symptoms like pain, you know, constant headaches, back pain, neck pain. Um, was like, on an emotional level, just realize that you snap a lot. Mm -hmm. You're angry without cause, you sleep, or you wake up tired, um, you have like constant headaches, you're irritable, you cannot concentrate past for 10 minutes or 15 minutes, you just desire to go home all the time and know what to work. So those are like signs of like workplace stress. Whenever you start to feel like your joy for the work is beginning to reduce, and something is happening that is causing your stress levels to go up. Mm -hmm. For other things like, um, um, heart, irregular heartbeats, um, like I already mentioned, constant, like physical, you feel physically and emotionally drained, you can't respond properly, mm -hmm. and all that. Those are signs of what. Can I say I'm enjoying listening to you? <laughs> <laughs> Your voice is quite soothing, I would say. So if you're feeling stressed, please listen in, um, and we will be able to help you. So we know um, stress, or, you know, stress can be good. Um, it can, you know, it can prompt us to actually be productive and do the work that we need. We need to do, and you know, and then the stress that you've talked about is when it's it's bad for our health and it's not very, it's not necessary, it's not needed. It's actually more um, detrimental. 
And we're talking about finding a balance. Is it even possible to find a balance? Because, I mean, work can really, really be very stressful. It can be hectic. Um, is it possible to find a balance? And what does it mean to find a balance in the workplace? So, as far as the work itself, if you're in Nigeria, I think, like, stress is part of our DNA. Because, Unfortunately. Like, we have, like, environmental factors mm-hmm. that con- contribute to the stress. So, just getting to work alone is stressful, you know, and so many other factors. Um, but I, I personally don't know how to say you can find a balance because it's quite difficult. But what I would say is that you can find a rhythm. Okay. You can, um, the first thing to do is be self aware. Mm-hmm. The advice I would give people is find, know yourself enough to know what triggers you and makes you stress out easily. Mm-hmm. And then find a rhythm that works for you that doesn't get you that stress. Mm-hmm. So for instance, if, and let me take myself as an example, um, I don't like last minute things. Yeah, I can relate. It can really get me stressed out. I like to plan ahead of time and know, okay, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm doing, so that I can mentally prepare for what I'm going into. So I try as much as possible to avoid any last minute issues so that I don't get stressed out. And if for me, because it can be, you know, there are some people on their CV, they say work well on that person. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I know, not, not really. Like, I would do a good job, but I don't work well, right? So I like to, so because I know that about myself, I do as much as possible to ensure that I am aware, even if it's just an hour, to get my mind ready mm-hmm. to go. So that is a way of discovering who you are and creating a rhythm that works for you so that you are not stressed all the time. Yeah. So um, I guess at the, at the, you know, behind it all, once we understand ourselves and know yeah. how we work, we're able to find the rhythm. I like yeah. that we're able to find the rhythm um, because we can't necessarily, what, what is balance for me be different from what's balance exactly. for you. And so finding the rhythm is actually quite a, an appropriate word to use. Thank you for that. Um, let's talk about how much of an impact can stress have on the mental health of a person um, who's working. How much of an impact can, um, can stress have? Stress, especially prolonged stress, can have like significant impact on your mental health. Um, first of all, mental health is just the um, state of health of your mind, just the way you have physical health. So you can have a poor mental health and a good mental health. So for people who thrive well on that stress, their mental health is productive mm-hmm. in that environment. And the funny thing is, a lot of this motivational and inspirational talk has promoted stress as the yardstick or the gauge to for productivity, mm. which is which is totally wrong. So people believe I have to wake up by three to show that I'm successful. Mm. I have to work till one a.m. and brag that I don't sl- I sleep only four hours mm. to get my job done. That's not the light, um, that's not the sign of productivity. The sign of productivity is I got the job done. Whether yeah. you did it in 12 hours or in four hours or in three, four hours span. So okay. working smart. Yes. It's so it can affect your productivity in the sense that your productivity is significantly low when you're stressed. And you can interpret that as maybe I'm not working hard enough or maybe I'm not as smart as I thought or maybe I'm not as brilliant as I thought. And then when your productivity is low, whoever is your supervisor or boss, it impacts their work. Yeah. And then you get a negative feedback. And that affects your mindset about yourself and your ability to work. And sometimes we don't know that in those moments, it's okay to ask for a break. Mm-hmm. And it's okay to ask for time out just to regain yourself back mm-hmm. so that you're more effective. So it has a um, significant impact on your mindset about yourself, your productivity, and your ability to achieve that's aside the other um, things that make you feel stressed, your brain cells are not even functioning as as per capacity when mm-hmm. you're stressed because your body is telling you, I need a break. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so. Great. Thanks for that. So on your bio, it says part of the work that your consultancy does is employee joy and engagement. Can you please tell us a little bit about that? Okay, so... Um, a lot of um, employers 
haven't yet grasped the concept of the fact that 90% of your organization are the people that work in it. Mm -hmm. And investing in their joy and well-being is investment in your company. So if you have, so there are employees who are engaged and disengaged. I'll just ask you a question. Have you ever come to work, but you don't work? You are there, you are present. Mm -hmm. Your laptop is open, mm -hmm. but you cannot mentally do anything. Yeah. So you sneak into social media mm -hmm. and then you are playing solitaire at work. Mm -hmm. And it's not because you don't want to work, mm -hmm. exactly. it's because you just cannot concentrate. Yeah. So you're, it's what they call absent. You know, there's absenteeism, that's when you are not around because you can't work. Mm -hmm. But there's presenteeism. Okay. You are present or you're absent. Okay. And that's. That occurs more often than absenteeism at work because people feel like if I don't come to work, I don't get paid, but I don't feel like coming to work. And not mm -hmm. because I'm lazy, I'm just stressed out, but I have to come, if not, I won't be paid. Mm -hmm. And then when you come to work, you cannot do any work because you are not physically and mentally able to do any work. So you are present, but you're absent. And that is even more dangerous than when somebody's actually absent. Because yeah. if the person is absent, you can find somebody else to fill that shoe. Mm -hmm. But if the person is present and doesn't work, your productivity level in the entire organization drops. Yeah. So we actually need employers to take care of the entire health of the people at work. So for instance, if I come to work and I'm present but I don't feel like working, and I meet my boss who cares about mental health, he can give me a break room at work to sleep a movie to watch, a game to play, just things that spark my brain back to life and mm -hmm. make me feel. Generally, if you have a boss that cares, it can encourage you to come to work. If you have a, a, a boss that puts things in place, just know that, okay, no matter how you are feeling, you can freely come and stay at work. It will encourage me to come to work because it's a safe place, not just only a workplace. Yeah. So it is very, very, very like important. So I specialize in joy and well-being, creating activities and plans and reconstructing workplace organizational structure okay. to fit the well-being and joy of the employees within the organization. There are things that stress employees out mm -hmm. at the workplace, outside the work. So like the behavior of the boss to the employee mm -hmm. can stress the employee out. It might be like a joke, so there's there's like an invisible power struggle yeah. that happens that people are not really aware about. Because you're a boss, you just feel like I can crack some jokes by employees. Mm. They're uncomfortable, they can't say it to you because they're a risk with telling you how I really feel. I may lose my job, I may not be favored, you know, there may be consequences. They may not be implied, they may be subtle, they may yeah. even be social consequences like people um, alienating you at work because you don't want to join in your trouble. Mm. You understand? There are things like that at work that employees don't know. Like, I wrote an article, five things bosses do that employees really, really don't like. Just Please share. Yeah. yeah. Please share. So, they're just simple things like trying to be overly friendly when they've told you that I don't want you that close to mm -hmm. me. Or asking about my personal life when I've made it clear. You know that <laughs> in such a ways that please don't ask me, you know, about things like that or just physical touch that mm, is inappropriate. Yeah. It may not look harmful, but if the person has told you, I don't like it, it's, you know, but I'm only joking now, but I don't like, I don't it, like you know, it. It makes me uncomfortable because I cannot tell you because of the power struggle that yeah. happens at work. And so it mentally affects that person coming to work every day, knowing that, oh, this is my boss is around, oh, ah, today is going to be a hard day. So imagine entering work with that kind of mindset. You will not be productive because you are, you are working on eggshells, you are yeah. careful, let me not say something, let me not do something that would upset my boss today. That's not the work. We're not even talking about the actual work itself that mm. comes with its own stress and struggle. So there are so many things that happen in the workplace and employee joy and well-being. So, for instance, like one basic example is when they're employing people at work, they don't do a mental health assessment yes. to, em mm. to employ people. People are going through different stages of mental health challenges. 
when you say mental health, it doesn't mean person is mad mm. or deserves to be in psychiatry. Or it's just things that stress people out, things that make them mentally unstable. You're supposed to do an assessment before you employ, so you know the kind of things to put in place yeah. should that person have an incident or an issue. Just the way you have health checks and medical checks yeah. at work. So these are some of the things that encourage employees. Imagine if you come to work and you know that if I ever have an issue, there's someone to talk to. Mm. And that person is coded. Not that when you go inside, everybody's like, ah, this mm. one has issues all exactly. the time. Yeah, you, know, you know, somewhere you can just unleash or unwind and get back to work. You know, a boss that can actually say, okay, you have um, maybe ADHD, for instance, that's attention deficit mm -hmm. disorder. Say, so, okay, I understand your challenge. This, you can work with this flexible schedule as long as you meet your targets. You know, yeah. if you have cons, you would be happy to come to work. Yeah. You would, in fact, you would, you, things like trying to rush you to make sure that you're early will not even occur because you're excited to come to work. So, employee joy and well-being is actually very, very, very. Yeah, it's very. Um, I'm glad you mentioned um, even mental health assessment prior to employing someone. And, you know, I'm glad you also mentioned it's not necessarily about saying, oh, if you have a mental health challenge, you can't work for me. Yeah. It's about knowing how to work with the person and yeah. how best to support the person yeah. too. Um, because we all have a challenge, you know, mm -hmm. some people handle it better than other people. Sometimes um, it's just trauma. Exactly. Yeah, so you want to be able to support. last boss that you had... <laughs> You know, because there's sexual abuse at the workplace. That's true. There's, there's bullying at the workplace. Yeah. There's verbal abuse. There are bosses who have told their, their employees down and the person's self-confidence has been shattered for a very long time. Yeah. So these things are actually real issues that impact our work and our ability to work. Yeah. So if you're aware of these little things, you know how to use your words with people. Yes. You know how to engage with them. You know how to relate with them enough for them to feel welcome at work. Yeah. Yeah. I know it says employee joy and engagement. How about employer? Do you have employer joy and engagement or is it just solely for the the people? Yeah, so I'm very passionate about the employee. Okay. So that's why I like focus on the employee. Okay. But like employers do get hurt mm -hmm. as well. They get um, taken advantage of, especially when you're very nice yeah. and welcoming and approachable. Mm -hmm. um, people take you for granted. And it, people even go as far. It's just like children, right? If you've ever been around a baby or a child, they want to push. They want to test your limits so to see how far they can get their way. So I don't really blame some employees when they behave, employers when they behave the way they do. But there's, there's, there's a way to communicate. There's yeah. a way to speak to make sure that everybody just to assert your authority but as well be a human being while you do that yeah thank you so for the employer and the employee and um, what are the tips that you can advise that we you can advise that we use to reduce stress in the workplace okay i will speak from like a mental health perspective mm -hmm. um like i mentioned earlier find a reading that works for you not a reading that your friend has said that works mm -hmm. something that works for you i would typically advise try something every week like a routine every week until you find the combination that actually works for you so this week it will it could be i will sleep early because sleep is actually very very significant to your mental health yeah if you sleep well, not sleep long, if you sleep well, mm -hmm. that's if you make sure that, okay, everything, like you just say, okay, this is what I can do today and sleep. Not that you, you while you're sleeping, you're dreaming about your to-do list mm -hmm. that you haven't yet achieved and who will finish you when you wake up, you know, <laughs> you will not, you wouldn't actually rest yeah. while you are asleep. So I would encourage everybody to find a reading that works for you. So you can try sleeping early this week mm -hmm. or um, sleeping really late and waking up really late. You know, just try something that works. Yeah. When you wake up in the morning, you know, you can actually ask if your employer is approachable. You can ask, okay, can I try a flexible work schedule? The same amount of hours and the same work schedule, but can I find a way to like manage it? Especially with the COVID, a lot of people work from home yeah. now. But the challenge is that a lot of people feel like it's a vacation, not a work from home. Yeah. So they don't have a routine or yeah. a schedule that they used to work. So they're always in panic mode mm. because 
when you're at home, there's TV, there's food, there's bed. You don't even understand <laughs> what those combination. are. <laughs> and before you know it, it's 12 a.m. And it's already the next day. And you have like a pile of work that you haven't done. And to try to manage your time well. Mm -hmm. Just You will never get more than 24 hours. And you will use eight of that hours to do nothing. Either sleep or gist or be on social media. Social media has made it worse. Mm. We probably spend 10 to 12 hours on that. So you have actually 12 active hours. You need to plan those hours comfortably so that you can achieve your targets. And then try to engage in activities that are outside work. Get a sport. I know a lot of people don't like exercise. They like to buy the clothes. <laughs> but you like to do exercise. Or do something that's fun. Yeah. Um, have a show that you watch, like a comedy show that takes your mind off things. Have a friend that you call, that just with you. Just make sure that you have these mind breaks in between your entire day so that every time you come off them, you are refreshed to do something new. Mm -hmm. So that encourage everyone Plan your time, plan your day, plan your sequence, plan your reading. Mm -hmm. Reading nice work. I know. <laughs> yeah, and then make, make it, try to make it work. And if it doesn't work for you, that's fine. Try something else mm -hmm. until you find the combination that actually works for you. Great. Thank you. Thank you for those tips. That's All right. Nice Let's see if we can get some of uh, you into the conversation right now. And if you have questions, please do well to call us. We'd like to hear from you on the show today. If you have questions in regards to your workplace, we want to hear from you today. We'd also encourage you to send messages to us on the WhatsApp portal. We'll take a break where we'll come back. We'll get to your calls and messages. Thank you so much. All right. Back to the phone lines now. Now let's look at uh, some of uh, the comments on WhatsApp. Please, you can just leave a comment if you do not have questions. You can leave commendations for uh, the guests in the studio as well as our co-host, Chinyaru Goldensi. We have a message here on WhatsApp from Austin Olaye. Austin sends a message and says, How do I manage personal life and work? How do I manage personal life and work? That's the first one. He goes on, I think about work all the time from my office to the house to church. I don't have a personal life. Even my friends ask me, what do you do for fun? What's your hobby? I can't tell. Most times I tell them that I, I like to work as hobby. Wow. <laughs> okay. Tying to that as well is a message from... Uh, no name to this message. This person is asking, how do I balance my marriage and my work? So work life and, you know, personal life, personal life yeah. more like. So these two questions, I think, are related. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to say that, first of all, there's this misconception that because it's your personal life, it comes easy. It doesn't. You have to prepare for it and plan for it. So the first word I would say is priority. Prioritize what the things that are important to you and then give time to them. So for instance, in the marriage, your family should be more important to you than work, even though money is crucial in the home. So for instance, you can just tell yourself, and when it comes to your marriage, little things count. So I have this philosophy that, you know, when they say little drops make an ocean. Don't be struggling to get the ocean. Start with little drops. So for instance, your marriage, you can have date nights every Saturday and ensure that you don't do work on a Saturday. It's once a week, yeah? But it's once a week that makes sense in a month. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, for instance, if you don't have, like the guy who said he doesn't have a personal life, you enjoy your work and you want to meet your deadlines. You have just, you are not just aware of your, the significant loss of not having a personal life. You need to be aware that it is as important to you as your job and the way you give attention. So for instance, just start small. Find a gym or find a club or find a movie time. And don't allow anything take that away from you. Once you set an alarm, if you have to, once it's time for your movie, put up your phone. You will actually not die if you put up your phone. Put up your phone and read a book. Put up your phone, dress up. You don't have to go out with anybody and go out. And come back and ask yourself, did anybody die? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and by the time you realize that, okay, you put up your phone for four hours, but nobody called you from work. 
you actually did it and nobody was dying, like the government was not on fire, mm -hmm. you realize that, oh, I can actually do this. So a lot of people is the first step that's usually hard. But just realize that it is important to you. And this is a reality, but it's true. If you die today, it will not take a week until you are replaced. Mm -hmm. Because the work will continue. They say, mm -hmm. soldier, come. Soldier, go. Barrack, Barrack still remain. Remain. Yeah, exactly. so just make sure that you take care of it. Prioritize yourself, yourself, your family. They're important. They're the ones that will remain when every, when every other thing goes. So take care of that as well. Yeah. So I think that's in, applies for the, the woman who is asking for her marriage as well. Yes. Now I was about to ask how, uh, you know, how you'd uh, advise someone who wants to find balance between work and personal life. And I think you've just mentioned that, but how do we set boundaries in work and our life balance? Okay. Boundaries. One of the most effective ways to set boundaries is vocally. Never ever assume that somebody knows. Hmm what your expectations are. We do not grow up in the same place. We don't have the same mm. background. We don't have the same ideologies, even though we live in the same country. Mm. So never assume that people should know that they shouldn't be touching you and your person. Mm. Some people is just a sign of affection or because I'm close to you. And people ask about your personal life, not because they care, but because of gist and curiosity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have to verbally let people know that this is your boundary because when you verbally said it you can remind them that it was said and they are aware but if you are using cues and signals not everybody will get your cue or your signal so for instance if you don't like people touching your stuff at work very simple you put your things in the fridge somebody comes and eats it that thing is very very annoying especially <laughs> when you have planned your mind about how you drink your juice and eat your this thing and somebody comes and picks it up you can go to the person and say not laughing you know like if you do something that really hurts me right. but i don't want to look bad in your eye and i'm like stop it now i don't like it mm -hmm. person will not take you seriously mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. like this see you i was very hungry and you ate my food i really really don't like it mm -hmm. we are friends so but this one you did not try mm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Person is aware that you're serious, but the person still knows that we are friends. Mm -hmm. So, like, them, especially when it comes to your boss, like, for instance, if I go out, I don't like my boss asking, where did you go to? You are not my father. Do you understand? Oh. Don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> no, especially when we don't have that kind of relationship. Mm -hmm. And when, when, if you go out, I cannot ask you also, where did you go? <laughs> it is unfair. And there's something they call workplace injustice. Mm -hmm. It causes a lot of stress at work, especially when you believe that what's being done to you is unfair. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so things like that, you just, so if they ask you questions, if they ask questions like that at work, only give information that's necessary. Mm -hmm. I went out. Do you need any other things, sir? The person <laughs> knows that. Because so, such familiarity can give the yeah. boss an idea that you probably never had in the first place. So just be courteous, but be respectful at the same time, but be firm. Yeah. Like, put your foot down. I don't like this thing. Laugh when it's time to laugh, but when it's time to be serious, be serious. Mm -hmm. That's the way you put boundaries, even with your friends. Because boundaries is just like land land boundaries. Mm -hmm. Over time, they get cleaned out and people don't know where the line is anymore. Ensure that the line is always clear <laughs> and people yeah. know where they stand when it comes to you. Like, you don't have to be rude or overly arrogant or me, I have boundaries. So mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. No, but just for the sake of yourself and for the next person, make your boundaries clear and voice it out, like vocally say, I don't like this thing or I like this thing. And the truth is, if it becomes too much for you, you can actually leave. Well, very good place to leave the conversation. If it becomes too much for you, check out. You need to leave. Uh, in, in wrapping up for you, we'd like to get uh, closing remarks. Um, I think, you know, I guess I said everything. Um, I really don't even have anything to add to it, but really appreciative of um, the time you've taken out to have this conversation with us because, you know, the workplace for uh, for the adults is where we spend the bulk of our life growing yeah. up. We work in, so it's very important that we learn to manage stress. We learn to reduce stress. And we learn to um, say the things that, we, that are on our minds and speak up, you know, because it goes a long way to affecting our productivity. Mm -hmm. And we want to also make sure that our mental health stays 
you know, in, in yeah. good shape. In good health. Are, exactly. If you are mm-hmm. mentally unhealthy, you will struggle to be productive in the yeah. workplace. Yeah. And then that forms like a, an, an uncomfortable cycle for you because then you can't take care of yourself or your family. So the idea is that we do the small things every day to make yeah. sure that we ensure um, that we're taking care of our mental health even in the workplace. So yeah. thank you. Thank you for that conversation with us. Anytime. Let's have the email and third number we can reach you on. Okay. So the number to call is um, at Neem Foundation is 0706-062-5054. I'll call the number again, 0706-062-5054. Remember that this is just for psychological support. Um, and if you need any questions or if you need to contact the resource person, you can come through us and we'll be sharing the contacts with you. Um, you can reach us on social media at Neem Sanctuary. is um, N E E M. S A N C T U A R Y. I hope I spelled that well. Um, Neil Sanctuary um, on, on Instagram. Send us a message, send us a DM, and we'll reach you immediately. And that's the voice of uh, Chiyar Godensi, clinical psychologist at Neem Foundation, sponsors of this program. Our guest on the show has been Bukola Dan Yusuf, a psychologist specializing in business and organizational psychology. Of course, an ardent supporter for youth development. She runs a foundation called She Nation. So the next time you hear She Nation, the founder and CEO is in the studio with us today. She's a United States Mandela Washington fellow. I'm so excited she was able to come. Give us clarity.